Greetings friends, welcome. Today we're talking about SQL Server partitioning and in particular how to create a sliding window so we can delete uh, historical data when it's no longer needed in the main database uh, using a metadata operation which is nice and quick compared to say doing delete star where date is less than a year old which is going to be slow and blocking you're probably gonna have to run that uh, in a green zone at the weekends um, sliding window partitioning allows us to delete this um, with a metadata operation because it can associate say a whole month of data or whatever boundaries you want but we'll do it for a month um, to its own file and file group it will have all the data on there all the indexes uh, and we can then essentially do a truncate against that which is very quick um, and yeah that's one of the advantages of SQL so before we jump in though if you find yourself enjoying the video feel free to click that subscribe below change the alert icon to all and you'll get updates for future videos right let's jump in um, so like I said, it's going to be a series, but today we're going to create the partition. Um, so I'll create a database invoice. And in here, we'll create a table invoice. And we'll have um, some invoice dates. And then just the amounts of each invoice. Uh, I've already got one. Which table am I in? Um, let's just check where we are. What did I use invoice? Cool. And then run that again. Okay, cool. So let's just check what we've got. We haven't got anything in invoice at the moment. No, all empty. Okay, so that's going to be our table. We'll have just some dates in there because that, that will allow us to uh, specify which partition the data goes on. That's going to be our the invoice date. It's going to be our partitioning key. So whenever we add uh, data to this table, SQL will look at that invoice date and determine which file and file group the data is going to go into. Um, and we'll show how to set that up now. Right, so... Uh, I'll make it even just slightly bigger again. Okay, the first thing we need to create is a partition function. And this will let us specify those boundaries for where date, data goes. Um, so we need to do a create partition function. And we're going to call it invoice partition function. And then we need to specify the um, boundary points for where our data goes. And we're going to do it on a month by month basis. So let's do, um, we're going to do for, no, um, as range for values. Uh, and then we want to specify these boundaries. So let's start with a 2021 and we'll do a January boundary. Um, so that'll be one partition uh, and then we'll create a 2021 uh, February and we'll do that on the first as well and we'll create one more 20 oops 2021 uh, March and the first of March again okay so I should be able to run that Uh, to invoice pf create partition function ah uh, yeah so I need to specify here what the type of the partition key is and we're going to be using dates so we need to put date time in here okay and that is fine so now we've got our function um, and this basically means when we add some data, if it is, say, less than this value here, it's going to go on to partition one. If it's greater than this, it will go on to partition two. And then if it's greater than this, partition three. And greater than this, partition four. So you're going to end up with um, one, two, one, two, three, four, five partitions based on the fact that we've got um, three boundaries there 
because we can have anything before it and then between these two, between these two, and anything after it. Four actually, four, four partitions. So we need to create where they're going to go as well. So like I say, it's going to be on a different file um, depending on which partition your data lands on. So we need to actually go in and create that. So let's do that now. If I go on to invoice here, and we'll create those. Um, so let's go into files and add a new file. And I'm going to name each of the files the same as the partition, really. So we'll say um, 2021 January. And we'll give that its own file group as well to keep it distinct. 2021 Jan. We'll have a 2021 Feb. Same thing there, 2021 Feb. We'll have a 2021 March. 2021 March. Uh, and like I said, it's going to be because we've got three boundaries, we need four uh, file groups. So I need um, one that's before. So let's add one more. Uh, and we'll just call that one for the moment um, pre 2021 Jan. Because that will that'll hold everything before there. Pre 2021 Jan. Alrighty. So if I click OK, it should create those for us. Right now, with those in place, we can now create a partition scheme. Now, and this this allows us to link up those boundaries on the partition function with the file groups that they're going to be associated with. So we can do create partition scheme, uh, and we'll call this invoice partition scheme. Uh, I mean, you need to say as partition, and this is our function, so invoice PS. Right, and then we need to say where they go. So we're going to say two, and we're going to place them onto each of those uh, file groups that we've created. So we had, um, we had pre-2021 Jan, we had 2021 Jan, we had 2021 Feb, and 2021 March. Right, see if that works. No, okay. Ah, uh, yes, invalid partition function. This this here needs to be my partition function. So that's where we join that up. All right, and that's that succeeded. So we've got a partition function, which defines the boundaries, partition scheme, which says which file group data on in each partition should go to. Um, what we need now is some data. So let's do an insert into invoice. And we'll put firstly some data right back at the start there. So let's um, let's put something in 2020, uh, right back in the start of 2020. And the amount for this we'll say was only 50 dollars like so we insert that one uh, right now we can we can look at this data now we do need to um, also link this table up with the partition as well so at the moment this table is not partitioned we've created a function and a scheme but we need to assign it to the table as well um, so I'll show it prior to being partitioned we can see that the data is, is just on one partition um, so let's just put a few more um, bits of data in. If we put a 2021 and say on the second, and things were looking a little bit better, $100 there, let's say. And then into March, even better again. Sorry, into February. And then into March, it took off. All right, so we got a little bit of data on there. Um, let's just look at that. Select star from invoice. 
like so. And you can see our data there. Now, from that query, we can't tell what partitions it is on, but we can actually look into that. We select star from sys dot um, dm underscore db underscore partition stats. And we want only for our um, our table. So we'll go where object ID equals and our table is invoice like so let's get rid of that one for the moment all right so we're getting one row back here um, because and it's saying partition number one that's because all of our data all four rows is on a single partition now we want to split that up into four partitions so we need to link our table now up with that partition function and scheme. Uh, I'll keep that there so we can come back to that. Uh, so what do we need to do? Well, we can get, we can assign it when we create an index. We could do it at um, table creation time, um, but you can also do it at index creation time. So let's create a clustered index and we'll call that um, uh, just in IDX date and that's going to be on our invoice table against the invoice date and then we can specify something now normally you might say on primaries but we can specify um, a, um, a partition scheme rather than the actual file group. You know, you might just say, oh yeah, I want this on, on my primary file or, you know, on your backup file or whatever, but we can now give it a function. So it doesn't just go to one, it goes to one depending on the date. Um, so we're gonna put this using the, the um, partition schema, the invoice partition schema, and it's gonna be based on invoice date like so so let's create that index all right now with that in place if I now go back here and run this again we've got one column there at the moment well sorry one partition when I run it now we've got four partitions so you can see them all down here and they've each got one of the rows on them so now that data has been moved onto those four file groups that we created all right so that was part one um, it's quite long so I'm going to split this up into a few and next time we'll be try we'll try and look at um, how to implement more of the actual sliding window part all right hope that was interesting give me a thumbs up if you liked it a thumb down if you didn't and thanks very much for watching catch you next time bye